Hey there folks, uh, thanks to the overwhelming response to my previous video, I've decided to make a, uh, another one, this time talking about uh, weft floats. So if you recall, you know, I'll do a very quick review, our setup was simply to put the heddle in the down position and then with every thread that still is on the top of your shed in the back, alternate the pickup stick, I'm only picking up every second thread. So. Just to give a quick illustration, pretending this is not here, I've just gone under, or sorry, over, under, over, under, over, under, etc., etc. And I've just shredded across all of those. So it's the same setup as in my other video, where basically the threads that are at the top with your head in the down position, I've alternated up, down, up, down, up, down, and threaded my stick through. Same setup for warp floats and web floats. So, as you recall from the last video, when we're doing a warp throat, the position is put the heddle in the up, and then I'm taking the pickup stick, and watch what happens as I bring it forward here. It brings up every second of those warps that are in the slots, brings them up top, and creates us a new kind of shed. Right? So without, those threads stay down. As I bring it in, every second one gets picked up. That was for warp floats. Weft floats are slightly different. For a weft float, you leave the heddle in the neutral position, turn your pickup stick on edge, and bring it up. I like to bring it up right here so it stays solid. So watch what happens now. You can see we turn it on edge and bring it forward. Now we're creating a different kind of shed. So our four sheds now available to us are regular up, regular down, up with pickup stick, flat, which is our wharf floats, or neutral position with pickup stick on edge, which creates our weft floats. So I don't want to mess with my scarf, but I'll show you I've got a sampler done showing you some of the techniques. So all of these are weft floats. So we've got some plain weave and then with the stick on edge in the neutral position I get a weft float which is deliberate and then I got some more plain weave, weft float, more plain weave, weft float. So I did that for a while just to try it out. Here I did like plain weave and then a weft float. In between there I did one plain weave and then another weft float and then I anchored it with a few rows of uh, plain weave. It gives a nice double effect. Here, I can't remember because it's a sampler, but I've got a weft float going on. Now you can also combine these, right, which is what I've started to do up here. So here I did plain weave, then a weft float, back to plain weave, and then I did a warp float for several rows, back to plain weave and a weft float, and you get this nice little box kind of effect. The point being, you can freely combine these, right? You can do weft floats and warp floats together, mix and match, do all kinds of effects, the big lesson though is always at least some point occasionally turn to a plain weave because it just anchors everything down. When you've got a weft float like, or a warp throat or a weft float like this, it weakens the fabric a little bit. Plain weave just ties everything together so you don't get stuff that's too uh, sloppy. A nice part of these kind of techniques too is it adds a bit of like loft and thickness to the fabric. So a plain weave is thinner when you've got these floats. It adds some bulk for like warm garments like scarves and stuff. It's going to add some insulating value and it uh, feels nice, feels cushy and warm and kind of luxurious. Okay, just a quick review, right? Our four sheds now are regular up, regular down, up with a flat pickup stick, which is going to give you a warp float, or a neutral position with a pickup stick on edge, which will give you a weft float. Try different combinations. The world's your oyster. Uh, you'll be surprised at the effects you get. There's so many different things you can do and it really adds a fun dimension to your uh, weaving. Hope this is helpful.